The Red Hot Chili Peppers and Jane's Addiction, two alternative bands that were beasts of their own kind. They both formed in LA and both appealed to a wide range of fans. Their music is creative, raw, and unique as hell. And throughout the years, the bands have had an interwoven history. <laughs> Before the formation of Jane's Addiction, Flea once stated he threw a party for local musicians to come play. He claimed it was at this party that Perry Farrell won the crowd over by playing a harmonica and being his charismatic self. Flea recalls being upset considering he had done a lot to promote the show and did not get as much attention for his performance. However, Flea states now in retrospect, his reaction was himself just, quote, behaving like a brat. It was years later that the two bands would play the same circuit and see one another's bands perform. It was during this time that a young John Frusciante, not yet playing in the Chili Peppers, became a fan of both Jane's Addiction and the Red Hot Chili Peppers while watching them at shows. The first musical collaboration between members was in 1988, where Flea performed in the horn section in the song Idiot's Rule off of Nothing's Shock. The Chili Peppers played a historic show with Jane's Addiction. This was a year after the Chili Pepper lineup featured John Frusciante, who had become the new guitar player after the death of Hillel Slovak. This show happened at the Theater of Living Arts in Philadelphia. The two bands had an argument over who would headline and who would open. Jane's Addiction, who had been enjoying the success of their 1988's Nothing's Shocking, won the dispute between who would open and who would headline. John Frusciante later reflects that he believes Jane's won the right to headline that show, stating that while the Chili Peppers played an amazing show, that Jane's addiction summed them in the most powerful energy he had ever seen, and that Perry appeared to have light beaming out of his eyes everywhere he looked. Years later in 1992, at Jane's Addiction's final show in California, John Frusciante marks this day as an important time in his life whereby he bookmarks the occasion by trying heroin for the first time. Shortly after this, John had seen a half-hour version of the movie Perry had been creating titled Gift, which he felt had a similar vibe to a piece of solo material he had recorded. John approached Perry about using the song, and the two arranged to meet at the studio where Perry had been editing Gift. After John visited the studio with a cassette tape of his song, Perry later called John and asked if the song had a name. When John said no, Perry suggested Ants, to which John simply replied, okay. The song known as Ants was then used in Gift. In 1993, Dave joins the Chili Peppers and goes on to contribute to the infamous album One Hot Minute. In spite of the massive criticism this album receives, I love One Hot Minute, but I'll save my defense of this album for another video. It was near the time of Dave's inclusion in the Chili Peppers when Perry Farrell and John Frusciante had been hanging out together. It was during this time that John looked to Perry for spiritual advice and guidance in his drug usage. In one instance, as written in the Whore's biography, John is quoted claiming he kept seeing worms crawling out of his eyes and would pick at them. Perry gave John a pair of goggles to wear, claiming they would solve the problem, and John claims he began to wear them. Later, Frusciante states that Perry convinced him to check into a hospital by advising him that in order to continue drug use, that he must stop periodically or else it will become too difficult to stop. John claimed it had been the only good argument he heard at the time for quitting drugs. Perry then took him to the hospital, let him finish all his drugs in his car, and proceeded to check him in. This wouldn't be the last time John attempts to quit drugs and alcohol. On the Dark Matter podcast, Dave said John reached out to him in 1997 asking for a guitar to play since he didn't have one to play in rehab. Dave gave him a sunburst Les Paul. Dave Navarro being in James Addiction, you know, which I think is a, a better band than us, you know. He fits in perfect in that band, you know, that was his band that he was meant to be in, you know. Red Eye Chili Peppers, it's, I feel like it's my band. 
I found this request interesting, considering that John had expressed disapproval at Dave joining the Chili Peppers. Of all people to ask, it almost seemed as though it were a passive-aggressive move, perhaps as a way to gain sympathy or maybe feeling as though Dave owed him something. Dave and John were never particularly close, despite the fact that John admits to being a fan of his work in jeans. Dave claims he never saw the Les Paul again, but that ten years later, John called Dave and came to his house to give him a black Les Paul to repay him. Dave claimed the black Les Paul now has more meaning than the original. Sometime after the release of One Hot Minute, the Chili Peppers went on hiatus. During the Chili Peppers hiatus, Flea and Dave were asked to work on a project with Porner for Pyros for Howard Stern's movie Private Parts. This song was Hard Charger. After the completion of this project, Peter DeStefano, the guitar player of Porn of Pyros, was diagnosed with testicular cancer, and Porn of Pyros went on hiatus, leading Perry to initiate the Jane's Addiction Relapse Tour. After Eric Avery declined an invitation to rejoin the band, Perry asked Flea to fill in his spot. Flea did so, stating that he would do so with the intention of honoring Avery's parts, playing them the way that Avery would. With Flea on bass, Jane's Addiction wrote two new songs titled Kettle Whistle and So What? which are both featured on the compilation album titled Kettle Whistle. One piece of trivia I found amusing was when Flea was asked about the difference between playing with drummer Stephen Perkins or Chad Smith, Flea stated that Perkins let songs breathe while Smith was a tight machine, stating that the difference lies in whether you're playing with a vegetarian pot smoker or a meat-eating beer drinker. Perkins also started a multi-musician project called Banyan, which includes John Frusciante writing and playing guitar on a few tracks on the second album, and Flea playing bass on one. In 1998, the Chili Peppers began to write a second album with Navarro and even completed a track called Circle of the Noose. The track was just released in 2016, and I like the song a lot. If you haven't heard it, it is definitely worth a listen. Though sadly, before an album could be created, Dave was terminated from the band. Tensions between Dave and Anthony began to form as the two had respectively relapsed back into addiction. Additional reasons for terminating Dave from the band came from the struggle to create material and musical differences. At this point in time, it wasn't until years later in 2007 that members of these two bands would collaborate. Perry Farrell released the album Ultra Payloaded under the project name Satellite Party and reached out to John and Flea to play on the track Hard Life Easy. Last, I don't fall into either the pro or anti-Josh Klinghoffer camp, but it is a fact that I haven't followed the Chili Peppers since his induction into the band. Regardless, another tie between the bands appears again as Josh Klinghoffer plays a fragment of what I consider to be a great cover of I Would For You. The cover is brief, but Klinghoffer delivers vocals strikingly similar to Farrell's in spirit and tone. Watching this cover made me feel that the influence and energy traded between the bands continues to resonate in their chemistry even after all these years. Although I don't follow the bands with the same passion I once had, I continue to appreciate the mutual inspiration these bands had on one another. These groups forged two completely unique sonic experiences, yet in my mind, they somehow both tapped into the same frequency of wild and uninhibited expression, and in that way it seemed to keep them tethered throughout the peak of their musical journey. Jane's Addiction and the Red Hot Chili Peppers will always be two of the most amazing bands I've ever heard.